Today, I'm going to share with you some simple interior design ideas, and I have 10 showcase interiors to share with you to give you some inspiration and ideas for your own build. So without any further ado, let's do this. When it comes to building interiors in Minecraft, I often see two major mistakes. The first one is too much empty space, and the second one is lacking the variety of rooms. Now, empty space can work in some cases, such as rooms that are designed for it, such as large farming rooms, throne rooms, or large church, where you'd have open space that would work. However, in most cases, rooms work much better and feel more homely when you have a more compact space, so try to plan the size of the room in advance so that you can base it around what you're going to actually place inside it. Limiting yourself to space inside a room will create that really cozy feeling and make the place feel much more homely in general. Lacking variety on the other hand can be a tough call because it's not always easy to come up with new and fresh ideas. So I find the best thing to do here is to try and think of a purpose for that room. Now this doesn't have to be an in-game purpose, it hasn't got to have a function, it just has to be a different purpose from the last room. Now with that being said, it's much easier to come up with ideas when you see some other people's designs. So today I've got 10 designs to show you. So let's take a look at some of them. Okay, so our first room is the workshop. Now for the workshop here, I've tried to keep the idea of things that we're gonna need in game. So here in the workshop are tables we would have used like our crafting table, the smithing table, stone cutter, grindstone, fletching table, brewing stands. You guys know all of the blocks that we're gonna be using. And I've kind of tried to place them all in here to give them a sort of purpose or a place that we can come to do any of our crafting sort of needs. We've got a little bit of storage up on the shelves there. We've got a little chest over here. Now here we just made kind of like a bit of a workbench. So we've got some upside down dark oak stairs going all the way around. We've put a couple of our tables in. So we've got the smithing table here and the cartography table just over there. And we've also got our stone cutter on the table to make it feel a little bit more like something is going on in here. Adding a few flower pots. I found the lever here, I think it looks a bit like a hammer, which I thought looked pretty good. And we put that next to the smithing table there to make it look like there's a hammer there ready to use to craft a bit of armor or something. Now, the design here is pretty simple. And one thing I would highly recommend is making your builds big enough on the inside so that you can double layer your walls so that you can add some color on the inside. Because, you know, builds can become very plain when you're using the same blocks as the outside of the build. So adding an interior wall color is a really cool idea. Now to the side here, we've got some stairs. We've got our cauldron and we've got an anvil to the side here with some more storage at the back here. So it's a pretty cool room for using on a regular basis, really. This is a sort of room we would use quite a lot in game. And then if we come upstairs here, we've got a place for our armor stands. So we've got our armor on both of these. Again, some more storage underneath and above. And then a chest at the side here. And just a few little decoration ideas just to make things look, you know, like this place is being used. You know, barrels are great for doing that. They make it look like there's some storage. But don't add too many barrels in one spot. Go ahead and, you know, mix it up. Add a crafting table or another bench just to make it feel like there's a few different things being stored rather than just a bunch of crates because uh, it does feel a little bit repetitive otherwise. And of course, a nice little detail to add some of your rooms is some little pictures or paintings just to add a little bit of detail on a plain wall. So if you have any plain walls, go ahead and put a picture or two on there just for a little bit of finer detail. Up next, we have a library. And I've got to say, this is a really cozy little room. And I think it's all down to the fireplace. Something about this just creates a really nice warmth to the room. And I like hiding these underneath little areas, such as stairways and stuff. There's just something about it that just creates a nice sort of um, a nice little feature to the area. Now, when you're creating rooms, I think one of the best things to do is to try and use pillars to kind of divide the room up and create a little bit of depth to your walls. As you can see here, we've gone ahead and added some pillars to divide up these little reading areas. Now, one thing that works great here is the bee nest and the elector. And as you can see, it kind of makes a really nice desk. We've then added a book with a, a oak stair and some signs. And this creates just a really nice little desk 
and is a nice change from all of the spruce as well so changing up the color with a bit of oak really breaks things up and i think it just works really well with this room in general now as you can see as well up here i have used a loom block based sideways into the bookshelves here because it creates a sort of empty shelf look so i think this works really well makes it look like a few books have been taken from the library but don't do this too much because if you do it too many it's going to look like there's way too many books missing and i think just the odd one just works so much better now, another good thing to do is add greenery. So as you can see, I've just got some um, azalea leaves here with a composter underneath. You can do this a little bit different as well by adding a flower pot, maybe with a dead bush or bamboo or even a cactus to create a bit of a stem. And it will look like a sort of little mini tree, which I think work really nice to sort of just add a little bit of detail to any room. Now for the stairway here is something that I do an awful lot because I, I don't always like adding thick sort of block stairways to um, like a little wall to come down the stairs and I don't like leaving them plain with nothing on the side. So using trapdoors works really well to create a bit of a banister. And this is really simple just, just by simply placing a trapdoor on the actual stair itself and then coming onto the inside and placing one above and you literally just repeat that all the way up your stairway. Creating curved stairways that come up and around like this is also a great way to add a bit of a feature to your room. It just creates a little bit of a sort of um, more of detail because you're seeing the stairway on two walls as opposed to one. And then having a little landing somewhere also really makes the room feel that much bigger. I'm not particularly a fan of having rooms with massive high ceilings and just like having a single room in it. I like to add more things. So adding a second floor or even a balcony like this really help create a little bit more atmosphere in a single room when you have a high ceiling. Now, with that being said, we haven't done much more with this room other than adding some more of our little sort of desks at the top here. We've added a little chandelier in the middle of the room and we've added some green terracotta to our walls. Now, as you can see, there's not many walls that are shown, so we don't have much of it. But I think the terracotta blocks work great for walls because they have a bit of a texture to them. And the colors are not too vibrant where they look a little bit too crazy for rooms, you know, because uh, some of the co uh, concrete blocks, they're very vibrant and a little bit too vibrant for walls. So personally, I really like the terracotta blocks. I think they work great as a decoration for your walls. Just remember, if you are building on an interior, you want to make sure you've got enough room on the inside. So if you're building a fairly small house, you're not going to be able to really add a color to your walls. But adding color to the walls really sort of creates a variety in your rooms because you can create a different color in every room. And this just really adds a nice sort of uh, feature to each room and creates that variety that you need to make things stop feeling too much of the same. Next up, we have a throne room. And I've got to say, I do love a good old throne room. There is just something about throne rooms that just really appeals to me, probably because I love castles so much, but you don't need a castle to have a throne room. You can build it inside your base anywhere. It doesn't have to be any particular build of any sorts. Now for this one, I've gone ahead and I've added some red carpet. I really wish we had some wall slabs because they would be so perfect here, um, but unfortunately we don't. So we have to go without spruce flooring. Now, with that being said, I've gone ahead and placed some red wall here to create this nice sort of walkway that leads up to the throne. The throne itself, as you can see, it's not really an awkward design. It's pretty simple. We've got some stairs at the bottom with a slab on top, some wall blocks. We've got a red banner. Then we've got our dark oak trap door at the front here to cover it up to make it feel a bit more like a seat. And I've used some stairs to detail the sides out at the top here with some more trap doors on top to create that final bit of detail. Now, one thing that works great here is just using some fence with some lanterns on. They create these nice little sort of holders for the lanterns, which I think work really well, especially down sort of corridors and stuff like that. So this is a really cool way of doing it. We've got a window at the top here, which is made with iron bars. I think iron bars just make this feel a little bit more protected, especially if they're going to have a king sitting in the seat here. Other than that, we haven't done too much. We do have some details down the side here. So I've added a bit of storage. So this is kind of 
an area where maybe we'd store store like our precious jewels like diamonds maybe it's some iron or emeralds and stuff like that you know just somewhere to keep them rather than keeping them with all the rest of our storage we could store them in a room like this as for our armor stands to place these on top of the carpet because as you can see i've added some carpet on top of the barrels which creates a nice little kind of um almost like a little sort of worktop you know like a sort of nice finish so doing that gives us a nice little finish and then to place the armor stand down you just got to place it one block above the carpet against the wall and it will drop straight down in place so these look great and then i've gone ahead and used the gold just to make it look a bit nice but you can place any armor on these to make them look nice it really doesn't have to be the gold and then a little bit more storage on these shelves up here because we have these quite tall arches we still want to make a bit of use at the top of the wall here so i figured maybe we'd go ahead and use it for a bit of storage but you could do many things with this, even adding in a different colored concrete, maybe some red concrete to make it feel a little bit more sort of royal in here. But yeah, there's just there are so many things you can do with the walls. So go ahead and play around with them to make it your own. But as you can see, this one is pretty simple. We do have our pillar details as we have done in the other rooms. And we have these little bits that stick out at the bottom here to make these pillars feel a little bit more supported. For the ceiling it's pretty simple we just use slabs to kind of make a nice archway and then a little detail on every third block where we have our pillars and i think it works really good and then having a little sort of chandelier there just finishes off the room so yeah i think that is just about it for the throne room next up we have a dining room and this one is pretty compact but i gotta say i do think it looks really nice Starting with the floor again, I've gone ahead and I've used the stripped dark oak logs with some spruce planks, which creates a very strange looking sort of checker pan. But I gotta say, I really like the way that it looks. There is something about the look here that I really like. Then we've got a dining table here. This is nothing special. Basically, we've got some planks in the center of the table, and then it's surrounded with some upside down dark oak stairs. For the chairs at the side here, we've got some slabs with some dark oak trapdoors at the back. And then a white banner on them, which just makes them look a little bit more sort of expensive, maybe a little bit more royal, um, maybe for some of your special guests. And then on the table here, I've gone ahead, I've placed down some item frames with some food in it. So we've got some salmon, potatoes and a steak over the back there. And then once you've put down your item frame and your food in it, just if you place onto the block a birch pressure plate and you get this sort of... Um, Kind of like this sort of tray look it looks like one of those wooden plates that you would put food on a lot of chefs use them and i think it looks really cool other than that decorate your table maybe with some sea lanterns or some turtle eggs i think they work great add a bit of cake and then in the middle here you can see i've added an end rod with some candles on to create sort of like holders for the candles which i think work really nicely now stairway over here we got a single stairway and we've done the same design as we did on the other stairway with our trap doors which i think work really nice underneath we've got a bunch of storage so this would be great for a little bit of storage here it's under the stairs out the way and kind of adds a nice detail as well little barrel here with a trip wire hook with some uh, pl flower plots which make it look a little bit more like a sort of keg so you can come over here and get a drink and then, of course, we've got a bit of an aquarium, which, which runs, if we come back here, all the way up to the second floor as well. So it runs right through. Now, the fish do tend to sit right at the top for some reason. I have no idea why. They don't really want to come down to the bottom. But adding just a few blocks inside, so some of the coral, some of the seagrass, some sea pickles and stuff like that, just to add some detail and some color to this it works pretty good. Although I think that pink might be a little bit too vibrant for this room. Again, over in the corner there, we've got some detail with a composter, some uh, azalea leaves and a spruce fence to create a little sort of tree in the corner and some more storage behind it. Upstairs, we've got a pretty cool little feature. Let's come down here and come up the stairs. We've got some more storage at the side of the fish tank. But this was a cool design I came up with for a little lamp. Now, I know a lamp like this probably isn't very medieval, but I had to showcase it because I thought it was a really cool design, which is a dragon egg one of the shroom lights and then a black stone button just on the top there which just works really well it looks like a proper little lamp certainly fits well into minecraft and would fit into any room really other than that up here we've just got some timber roofing so as you can see we've got our beams going all the way across with some slabs through the center 
and a bit of lighting again making use of some paintings on some of the walls to add a little bit of detail but yeah other than that it's not too much but again using these balconies here really add a nice feature to the room somewhere to overlook to the people eating down down below as well and again like i said keeping the rooms fairly low as you can see this gives us another four block sort of gap before we have our next level and i just think this just fits really nicely i don't like having those tall roofs unless they're needed Next up we have a bit of a kitchen and I gotta say this one kind of feels maybe a bit more like a bakery or maybe even like a Spanish kitchen of some sorts but I've got a stairway that goes all the way up to the top here and again as of before I've changed the flooring out for the deep slate and I gotta say this works really well with this build I don't know what it is about this color here but this works really well with the yellow um, terracotta for the walls I think it just looks really nice now down here this is the main sort of kitchen so we've got a little sink over here with some trap doors using some barrels as some overhead units some trap doors with some lanterns behind with our uh, smokers underneath this creates a little bit of an extractor look now i know extractors probably weren't about during or definitely weren't about during medieval times but it kind of just looks fitting again using the bee nest i think these work nice as some little sideboard units with a few little details here and there I've noticed that some of the saplings actually look like dried herbs. You know, when you put them in flower pots, they look kind of like dried herbs. So I went ahead, not dried herbs, fresh herbs. Uh, so we've gone ahead and put them at the side here. These will be fresh herbs for the kitchen to use. A fireplace over here. So we've got some campfires underneath and then some campfires that have been put out on top. And then we just put some food on it. So we've got some raw food on top of those to make it feel like those are being cooked. Now, other than that, we've got a little workspace over here. So as you can see, we've got some cake, we've got some potatoes, chicken and some lamb all sort of ready to be cooked. So they're sort of all prepared. A little storage box there and just a few little details to make it feel a bit more like a kitchen. But overall, I've got to say, I really like this design. Again, I've gone with the same design for the stairway here just to keep everything sort of feeling a little bit more sort of the sort of similar style. And then as we come upstairs here, this kind of opens up to a little bit of an eating area. Now, this could just be for the people who live here or work here, or you could have it as a little eating area for people who want to come in and buy. If you have a bakery, for instance, this might look pretty nice as somewhere to eat. So we've got some little tables here, sectioning off each one in these little three block gaps. Again, using our pillars to divide the room up. And then we've got the chimney that would be coming all the way up here. A little bit of shelving and details. And then some barrels over in the corner for a bit of storage for food because I imagine a kitchen like this would have storage all over the place with plenty of stuff such as wheat and rice, bread, carrots, potatoes and all that kind of stuff. For the ceiling here, I've kept it pretty simple here. I thought I'd try something a little bit different. Probably not my most favourite of ceilings, but it is something different using those upside down stairs to create a little bit of a curved point and then a slab in the centre with a few little hanging lanterns. And that's just about it for this kitchen but i think this one does work really nice and i do love the vibe that i get from this one and the floor in here especially i just love the look of it it looks really nice and it just gives a nice coziness but almost a bit of a rustic look at the same time now of course the night interior will be complete without a bedroom that's one of the main rooms that we need so i went ahead and made this little bit more of um Maybe slightly more modern look to it, but still a little bit rustic because we've got all of that wood in there as well. So starting down at the bottom here, I did go ahead and just stick with the spruce planks down here just because I wanted to create this nice sort of warm feeling here and keep everything feeling very similar. So I didn't want to have too many color changes. So we went with the spruce floor. We've got some spruce stairs, some stripped dark oak logs and some trap doors to create a bit of detail around these beds. We've got these cyan beds here with some wall behind them. And I've gone ahead and used cyan for the wall as well to make the colors sort of blend in a little bit. I've also created a little bit of a shelf here. So we've gone ahead, placed some trapdoors at the side, added two shelves. We've got a flower pot at the top and then sunken into the wall. I've added some barrels at the top with some bookshelves underneath, which just, which just create a little bit of a feature behind. So because we can't fit nothing onto the shelves, that feature behind it just adds that detail needed, you know, so it doesn't look so plain. Over the side here, we've got one of our armor stands with some Neverite um, armor on it. 
a little shelf up here and then a plant as some detail so again very basic down here nothing too crazy over the side here we've got some barrels again sitting just in that one so you can see the stair detail still comes out on that outer edge but underneath on the second stair is where the barrels are actually sitting now coming upstairs we've got some pictures on the wall as we go up and up here i thought this would just be nice as a little bit more of a room to put all of your 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 armors you know we've got our main armor we would be using down here which is the neverite one but why not store some of our older armors so we've got them on display with our diamond gold iron and leather armors a little light just underneath the trap doors up there creates a nice bit of a glow bringing it down again using some barrels for a bit of storage works great some more storage on this side and then I've gone ahead and I've kept two white walls on the left and the right side. And that back wall there is cyan. So it gives it a nice bit of a different color. And the cyan concrete isn't too overpowering here. The color doesn't sort of stand out as a too vibrant color. I think it does work pretty well. So I wouldn't have done all of the walls. But having that one back wall color like that does stand out pretty nicely. Next, I wanted to try something a little bit different. So I thought for here, we'd use kind of like a greenhouse feel. So this would be like a kind of gardening room. Now you could actually do this inside a greenhouse, but I think you could also use it inside your base as a sort of, um, as a room where you grow all your plants and stuff. So down at the bottom here, we've got a stairway, which kind of leads up to two balconies this time. So we've got the single stairway through the center, and then it comes up and around to these little balconies at each side, which I think is a pretty cool little feature. I've kept the floor down the bottom here a little bit sort of um, more sort of sort of outside sort of material. So we've got some stone, mossy cobblestone, mossy stone bricks, uh, some polished andesite and some andesite all mixed in together here, which creates a really nice looking ground. Now, I've literally just gone crazy with the flowers and the plants and saplings all over the place down here. So as you can see, we've got a bunch of them put down here and having these two racks works really nice. So we've basically got some oak planks across the back with some upside down stairs above and some upside down stairs in front, which creates a little kind of um, like sort of double shelfing sort of unit. It's uh, pretty cool and it gives a nice display for all of our flowers and stuff that we have down here. Then we have two little sort of uh, flower pots down here. Again, just using the spruce fence and the azalea leaves with our composter at the bottom. And we've got some leaves at the very top there. As you can see our vines are growing down, which creates a nice little overgrown area in here. And uh, yeah, really adds a really nice sort of feeling in here. It's really nice. It feels like a, a little bit of nature. At the very top here, I've literally just added these flower pots using the spruce trap doors and some uh, cool stuff. And then just put some of the tall flowers on top. In the ceiling up here, we've got the leaves with just a few of the vines. I tried not to place too many because I didn't want them growing everywhere. So I've just kind of put them in a few places that I wanted them to grow down. And if you're using the vines and you want them to stop at a certain point, simply just place a little bit of string. As you can see, that string there will just stop the vine from growing past it. Just like it does with many things, you can place string above saplings in the ground and they won't grow. So, you know, it's always worth keeping that in mind. Also at the back here, I added a last little bit of detail with a couple of shelves. Again, it's nothing too crazy, but it just it's, it saves having that plain wall. You know, having a plain wall doesn't sort of look very nice. So adding just a couple of little flowers on a shelf here it really brings out just a little detail and just makes the room feel less boring. Next up, we have a storage room or possibly even a bit of a junk room. As you can see down here, I've gone ahead and I've used the tuff for the flooring, which I think works great for this little room. And then we've gone ahead and used bricks for the wall to create a little bit more of a warmer color. So we don't want it looking too gray and too plain in here. So the nice brickwork at the back just adds that little bit of color. Now I've gone ahead and created some sort of shelving. So we've got some upside down stairs with some spruce trap doors. And then we just filled it up with any blocks that we've got. So I've gone from composters to chests, anvils, crafting tables, loom blocks, uh, campfires, even flower pots and stone, uh, not stone cut, the um, grindstone, you know, just to add those little details in there to make it feel like there's a bunch of storage down here, which works really cool. 
So the side of the stairs here, we've got like a bit of a keg with our tripwire hook and a flower pot to make it look like a cup. But yeah, just keeping it pretty simple down here. Nothing too crazy, but it does certainly feel a lot different from our other rooms and looks much like a storage room. Going upstairs, we've got some little shelving up here. So not nothing too much, but this will give us some room to add some more of our storage if we wanted to. We've just got some random stuff on our shelves. In the corner here, we've got a little cupboard. Now, as you can see, we've got some food on the campfires here. So just put your campfires out and then you can place any raw food on top or anything that can be cooked inside a furnace. So anything from the raw fish to raw salmon, raw chicken, potatoes, any of that stuff can all be added onto your campfires. Then we got some more storage with a bunch of chests. This would work really good for your storage because there's quite a lot of areas to place some of your storage. There's barrels and chests everywhere. So this would work really well. Added a little uh, flower here or a little bush to make it look a little bit more green just to add a little bit of color detail because this room does lack a little bit of color other than the red brick. Again, the ceiling up here, just some basic timber sort of roofing. So we've got those beams going across with some trap doors and some upside down stairs in between them. And then finally, we've got another little cupboard just over here. Again, storing some of our raw foods, but you guys can add anything in there that you please. And that just about does it. It's pretty simple, but overall, I think this room works really well. And if you're trying to find something to do with an area that you want to just fill with some empty space, give it a storage room. Next up, we have a pretty cool kind of bathroom design here. So I gotta say, I really like this one. And yes, I did go ahead and use spruce planks for the flooring here, but it's because of the look that this room had. I just felt like this room needed the wood flooring down as the planks, which I gotta say, I think it just works well with the room in general. Now being themed on medieval, I went ahead and created a little bit of a sort of hot tub bath here. So in the corner here, we got three sort of wide, we've got trap doors across the back and the sides and a little step to get in as our bath. Now, I think the eggs and the uh, sea pickles here work well as kind of like soaps and sponges. So place some of those on the side. We've got our stairway going up at the sideways here. So of course, we've got some of our barrels at the back there for a bit of storage as well. We've created a shelf at the back here, put some snow layers on top, which look a little bit like some sort of rolled up sort of towels or something. And then a couple of banners here, which look like some towels hanging on the side. And again, we've placed some more of our uh, snow layers here to create again, some more towels at the side. And then other than that, it's just a bit of storage down here with some shelves, just some final detailing, just so really just finding things to put in the area, just to make it feel a little bit more like a room and less empty. And then of course, we got our little toilet, which is nice and clean at the moment uh, because we just took it all out. So it doesn't smell and it's not dirty. So that's good. Last thing we want is to stink the house out before we come and bring people in here to have a look. Now heading upstairs here, we've just got kind of a little bit more of a dressing room. So we've got a couple of our armor suits up here with some storage underneath, a few more towels here, a little sort of dresser unit here with our lamp on it. And then just some final details with some bushes. And up here, we've gone ahead and used some fences just to create a little bit of a different look to the land in here, creating a nice support for the balcony here as well. Just adds a nice feature. Now, one of the things I got to say that I really like about this room is having the red terracotta walls. This creates a really nice warm feeling. And then at the back here, we've mixed up two of the dead coral blocks to create a little bit of a pattern in the wall, which I got to say just adds, I don't know, a really nice look to it. There's something about the look of this that really stands out. And uh, yeah, I think it's one of my favorite little sort of bathroom designs. Almost looks like some sort of mixed up tiles. Finally, we have a brewing room and I got to say, I just wanted to throw a bunch of color at you for this one. As you can see, we've used the blue and the pink uh, terracottas here, which add a really nice color. It certainly feels a bit like a kind of wizard's room, if you like. But we've got a bunch of color here with our uh, blue terracotta walls as well, which add a nice sort of color tone. And overall, I got to say, this room just works really nicely. 
I tried to make a little bit of a work area here. So in the middle, we've got a bunch of our bees nests. We've got some um, campfire here. And if you don't know, you can actually put kelp on top of a campfire with some raw salmon to make it look like they're getting ready to brew a potion. We've got the brewing stand in the middle. Uh, we've got some mushrooms inside the flower pots with some of the sea pickles and then a little smoker around this side just to make it think, sort of feel a little bit like a working station in case they wanted to cook something that was going to be brewed first. Now, other than that, down here, we've got a nice little area here. We've got two barrels at each side here with a little Neverwalk sign here to show as if we're storing some Neverwalk in here. A couple of hanging plants with some hanging vines. And then we've got a, another little work area here where we're growing our Neverwalk. We've got some brewing stands with our books for all of our potions, which I think is pretty cool and a little desk to sort of work at. So I think that works pretty cool. Now for the upstairs here, I decided to create two stairways, one at each side, just to so show a different sort of variation. As we come up, we've got a little flower pot here with the vine that grows up. I forgot the name of this one. It's a creeping vine, creeping vine, yeah. And then if we go up here, this is just kind of a little bit more of an open work area. We've got some more books up here, some more brewing stands, some ingredients on the shelf. So we've got mushrooms and flowers and all sorts of stuff here. Maybe some herbs all for our brewing, some more never wall, and then kind of just repeated the same over on this side too, just to add a little bit of a finishing detail and then some paintings on the wall. For the ceiling here, again, we just kind of mixed a few blocks up to make a little bit of a different pattern in the ceiling. I think it's nice when you get a chance to try and mess around with your ceilings, create some different patterns and styles because they also add a nice variety to your builds. You can also use things like the barrels to create like a little bit of a sort of a wood paneling for the bottom of walls, which I think works really nicely. And yeah, overall, I've got to say, guys, these were really fun to put together and I do love these sort of designs. Now, if you're looking for some more interior inspiration or ideas, be sure to check this video out here. There are a bunch of really cool ideas that you might enjoy, and I'll catch you in the next one.